Hey guys, Nate Bailey here with the Barebow Hunter and the Life Outdoors. And in my last video, I gave you three tips to help you with your instinctive archery. Um, I didn't go into concentration as much as I should, and I had a lot of comments of people going, well, you kind of cut it off there. We want to know more about concentration. So if you didn't see that video, I'll put it right here. Um, and th today's video, I'm going to give you three tips on how to um, hone in your concentration when you're shooting traditional archery. Now, there's a couple things that we need to cover before I go into this. The first thing is, is um, everything, everybody shoots a bow differently, okay? Now, there's people that can give you a lot of tips out there, a lot of form, a lot of mechanics, give you the, the structure and everything else, which is great. You need to do that. But you got to understand that not everybody in the NBA shoots a, a basketball the same way. Not everybody in the NFL catches a football the same way. Not everybody um, in NHL hits a hockey puck the same way. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, another thing is, is you got to understand also is there's a lot of different ways to get the job done. There's a lot of different types and styles of methods of hunting. Some people uh, still use their range finders and do like a gap shooting and they're effective out to a longer range than guys like me who do their uh, instinctive archery that there are different natural abilities in this as well. Um, some people shoot a basketball better than other people. But I do think if you follow these tips, that they will help you um, in your personal, and, and not, to, not to look at somebody else's shooting, but in your personal shooting, these will help you. If you're, if you're an instinctive archer, these will help you in your instinctive archery. All right, so the first tip I have for you is to figure out a process. In, your, in the way that you shoot, because that process is what's gonna um, hone down your focus to, to your target. And I'm talking about any kind of target. Um, most of what I like to shoot are animals. So you really have to figure out how to focus to even shoot at an animal. Um, animals are really hard to focus on, especially in, like in a hunting situation, especially like an elk situation where you've been calling him and all of a sudden he shows up, or turkeys. Um, once, they, once they're there, then you feel like you've won because you, you're really trying to get them within bow range. But the problem is you still got to shoot them. So that's hard to focus on once they're there. You're, you know, you come in and you call them in and then all of a sudden they're there and you're like, ah, oh, I won, he's here. But you still got to control yourself and be able to focus in that moment because you still have to make that shot. And I'll tell you what, I have, I've won, just froze up. I've called in bulls and not even shot and I'm like, I already won. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I got to shoot this thing. Um, so I've done that before. And another thing is I've, I've called in bulls and then I'm like, ah, oh, he's here. I'm just going to fling an arrow. <laughs> and, and I've done that before. And uh, I thank goodness I haven't wounded an animal doing that, but I have made some really stupid misses. Um, so the last time I did that, I really got after myself and said, hey, uh, you need to, if you, just don't shoot. If you're, if you're in that frame of mind, don't shoot. So um, I started thinking about what it takes to focus because instinctive archery, that's really what you're doing is you're focusing um, like a basketball player would focus on the rim, but he's got to do it in that split second, right? Or else uh, he's going to not be able to make the shot or he's going to get blocked or something like that. So that's what we're practicing here. So come up with a process in your shot. And I'm going to turn this way to kind of, so you can see my bow. So my process in my shot, and this helps me get to my focus to where... Um, I could take my mind off of the fact that I'm in bow range now. And, and it's kind of like a switch. You go, wow, I got him here. Okay, now I need to actually focus on my shot. Um, and this all happens within a split second. So this isn't something that you're taking like 10 seconds to do, okay? The first thing I do is I feel, um, I, I feel for that right spot on my bow hand. I make sure, and that's why it's so important to get a bow that fits because 
you don't want to hunt around for this because that's going to throw your concentration off on everything. If your concentration stays um, connected the whole way through as you're doing your shot process and it doesn't get um, uh, broken, your concentration doesn't get broken like you have to go over here and then come back, your concentration is going to hone in and it's going to be a lot tighter. So the first thing I do, find that spot on my bow. This bow makes me just go there. Um, I came back to this bow. This is the Mongol. And I was shooting the Yeti, but I came back to the Mongol because I just shoot it so much better. And then the second thing is, is when you put your, of course you put your arrow on, and I don't have any tips on this arrow, but put your arrow on. Um, once you, and, and I always have, I always like to have um, snap knocks because in hunting situations, it's so nice to have your arrow and everything ready. I don't, I, I know you lose a little bit of um, speed with a snap knock, but who cares? It, we're hunting, right? So one of the things I like to do is I like to, as I'm focusing, as I'm concentrating, my hands in, and then I, as I'm coming in and engaging the string, I wanna make sure that that snap knock is still up against the knock set. And that, that helps my focus. Now, see, everything right here is concentrated right here. The elk could be out there and he could be doing what he does. And everything's right here. He's going to give me enough time. And this is like split second. This is like everything slows down, kind of like when you're in an accident or something like that. Everything slows down. And now you can engage. You're concentrating here. Now, as you're drawing, you're concentrating on, on your bow arm, on um, all the... And it's kind of a subconscious concentration now, which sounds really weird. But it, you got muscle memory that goes along with all the other concentration you have to do. Now you have to, in your form, if your form's good and solid, and you've come to this point, um, your arm's gonna be the same as it was through all those thousands of shots that you've done. And then the biggest thing now is when, when I'm starting to draw, and this works for me, all I'm worried about is back. And I'm feeling that tension building in my back. And I'm building that tension, and I, I keep telling myself to build that tension. And when I get to where my shoulder blade starts um, collapsing in my back when, when I'm starting to open that back up or, or, or my chest up, that's when my shot releases. Now, as I'm doing that, the minute that I start feeling that, um, that chest opening up, and that's how I shoot, is I, I, you can almost feel it right in here as you, as you collapse your back. Um, I don't know if that's proper form for the guys that shoot, you know, uh, they're shooting tens all the time. It works for me when I'm hunting because then I can concentrate on my target and my groups aren't going to be what those guys are. Um, so, the, you know, the guys that do a lot of league shooting and stuff like that, if you really want to hone it down to that, you need to go watch those guys like RMS and uh, Shot IQ. Those guys, man, they'll outshoot me a hundred times. But this is, this is in a hunting situation when you're, um, this is the way that I do it. That way I, I, it keeps everything um, instinct not instinctive because you have to learn this but it keeps everything in motion for the for the hunting shot so as i do that and i start filling my chest um open up then i'm looking for the smallest spot on the animal and that's like a hair and quite honestly um i have a hard time with turkeys because they're black so it's hard to pick out something in in a kill zone on a turkey um but you start looking for something the smallest little itty bitty thing that's in that kill zone that's what you look for and uh you just look you just burn a hole in it i know that people say yeah that doesn't work you don't burn holes in it you know that's not gonna yeah you burn a hole in it and then as you burn a hole in it as everything you're feeling everything and there's just something if you shoot enough there's something inside of you that'll click and that's when you release um it takes a lot of shots it takes a lot of work but um it's it's kind of a, a it, it runs through the physical and the metaphysical part of your um, processes. So the physical part would be, of course, all the all the the feeling that you get, all of the um, points of reference that you get as you're going through, and this and of course the metaphysical part is when the the brain or the spirit or whatever takes over and says, "Okay, you're going to release." So that's your first tip. All right, so the second tip I have for you is when you, when you uh, set up your target butt, and I would suggest using a target butt to get yourself um, 
your concentration honed in and then move to a 3D target. When you set up your target butt, put something contrasting on there to shoot at. That will, um, and then when, when you do shoot, you can concentrate on the one spot. I don't even like these rings. I, I put something on there that's highly contrasting. Um, that way when I'm looking at the target, I have, I can hone down my concentration. Um, you can even take a stick or like if you're out stump shooting, put a pine cone up on a stump or something like that rather than shooting at the stump itself. Um, those little things will help your concentration. So when you do get into a situation with an animal, you'll be able to pick out the littlest thing. Um, stump shooting is awesome for this. Uh, so stump shooting and take a little stick and then shoot, you know, at little sticks. Um, you'll be surprised at how good your, your metaphysical uh, uh, brain and, and the, it's almost a spiritual act. You'll, you'll uh, how it takes over and you could actually start hitting closer to your target. Um, if you notice th that those arrows that were in there, those were at 20 yards, which, you know, for a target archer, that's horrible. But 20 yards on an elk, that was a heart shot on both of them. So um, the cool thing about this is, is instinctive archery, you don't need to have a lot of different, um, your form all has to be just straight here, but you could shoot from all different uh, angles and you could shoot from all different uh, perspectives and you don't need any added, you know, like uh, range finders or, or looking at the tip of your arrow or anything like that. So that's, that's the second tip I give you for um, taking and, and honing your concentration down to little spots. If you could okay, so that's the sight picture I have when I um, am starting to concentrate on where I want to hit with my target. Now, I don't know if I could do this with camera, but I'm going to try. So I even, once I get that sight picture and I'm starting to concentrate, all what I do is then I just hone in on that very spot that I want to hit. And you notice that's kind of what my sight picture is. I don't even know my bow hand or my bow or my arrow or anything. That's how I shoot. Um, now there's a couple advantages to this. The first is you can watch your target. The second is... Um, you don't get distracted by anything that's going on in front of you. So that's that's how my sight picture looks. I'll go back out here to kind of show you. That's how my sight picture looks. That's all I look at. Okay, so for the third tip I have for you, if you're finding it hard to still concentrate and you're having a hard time still concentrating, you've gone through your process, you're still getting distracted when you come and try to engage the target, You've already put your um, you've already put your contrasting piece little piece of uh, something on the target to shoot at, and you're still finding problems with trying to concentrate. The next thing that you can do is move your target butt into a spot that's kind of tunneled in, so or shoot in between two objects that makes you concentrate on that target rather than on the whole th the whole picture. Um, and these are things, you guys, these are drills that you do before you get out in the field because you're going to have to be able to concentrate out in the field. You, you can't control your shooting out there, so it takes repetition. You have to do the things that are physical to affect the things that are metaphysical. So um, this, this natural stuff that takes over in the human body. So that's what you um, are really doing here. And then if you still have problems, I'm going to, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. But... If you're still having problems with that, then you just have to start moving closer. And then close your eyes, start shooting your shot, think about your shot, shooting your shot, open your eyes, look at the little spot, just shoot at the little spot. I don't care if you're 10 feet away from it, just so long as you start concentrating on that spot. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about by putting a, uh, your target in between two objects that make you concentrate on it. All right, so concentration is super important. Pretend like this was an elk through here, and you, you'd see that there's an opening there, and you could shoot through that opening, 
but you got to be able to concentrate. You can't look at any of the limbs around it. So concentration is super important. Um, this is an elk. You want to kill that elk, and you just called him in. He's hanging up in the brush, but he left you a hole. This is where concentration comes in. Let's go take a look if we killed that elk. This is the hole that you're shooting through. No lot of brush through here, but you just sent arrows right through this. And the elk heart, the, the exact spot of that elk's heart is where that orange was. And if you look, that's what about three inches. That's a dead elk. With any one of those shots, that's a dead elk. So that's why concentration is so important if you look back through the hole. Um, that was probably 15 yards or so. So that's why concentration is so important. And that's why I believe that uh, this method of shooting, if you want to play close, if you want to get them up close, this is a very, um, very useful method of shooting even if you're a gap shooter and you're shooting you know some of those longer ranges for mule deer and things like that um practice some of this too once you got your gap shooting down and practice some of this and get to where you could shoot that you know 25 and under just really well i hear people all the time telling me that they have a hard time at the 25 and under well if you go through and start doing some of this instinctive drills and start thinking about concentration um, I think you could switch back and forth between the two. I'm okay guys, there you go. So that's the three tips that I have for you to help hone your concentration for instinctive archery. I think this instinctive archery is a great thing for you gap shooters out there to um, add to your quiver for that 40 yards in. Um, I think it'll help your shooting out a ton.